Welcome viewers to Live Laugh Law, the show where we speak to lawyers who've been down a slightly different interesting path and who share their experiences but also giving us an opportunity to um, put them on the spot, make them feel a bit uncomfortable, make them sweat, make them feel a little bit awkward um, and that's the bit actually that I'm most looking forward to, to today. <laughs> um, my name is Bavini and I'm going to be speaking to the five-time Canadian wrestling champion Howard Stubb. Um, Howard until recently served as the head of legal and special advisor at the International Olympic Committee and so he's had an interesting journey to say the least and we're really excited to be speaking to him today. Hi Howard, how are you? Uh, very good Bavini, I didn't know you were going to make be uncomfortable and and sweat well we'll see what oh, happens <laughs> i'm teasing i'm teasing i know i so am i howard so am i i'm just teasing you but that's why you went and got the water i thought yeah good idea you need to hydrate <laughs> during this definitely <laughs> but we're really excited to have you here today on the show happy to be here good um now i'm going to dive straight in um into the questions one of the most interesting things about you is that you competed in the Olympics for wrestling. Um, you represented your country, and at the same time, you were studying engineering, you were studying law. Um, what I really wanna know, and I'm sure our viewers would be really interested in, is how and what qualities you took from wrestling, I suppose sport, which you then applied to your legal career, um, or just in life generally, to, uh, as an individual. Well, I, I think the qualities that wrestling helped develop in me were things like mental toughness, discipline, resilience, you know, not giving up. And maybe I've sort of said this word, but basically the opposite of being mediocre. I mean, you got on the yeah. mat and you didn't have any teammates to rely on. It was just you. And you really had to go out there and give all you had, both physically and mentally. I guess I had some of those qualities going into wrestling. Um, yeah. And that's why I was a, a decent wrestler. But I guess wrestling even reinforced those qualities so it became kind of a virtuous circle and those qualities helped helped me immensely in wrestling uh, sorry in wrestling in uh working as a lawyer for the ioc and yeah. quite frankly i realized as i would get older i realized that those qualities helped me in almost every aspect of my life and it took me a number of years to realize that because of some of those qualities discipline resilience mental toughness I was different from other people. I didn't realize that at the first, you know, at first, uh, because you kind of accept who you are as you are. And mm -hmm. I never want to feel though I'm better than anyone else. I'm, you know, just want to be good at what I do. Yeah, absolutely. That's really interesting. I mean, those things that you said, like resilience, discipline as well, like all those things that you kind of have to be instilled in you um, and you have to work on, um, you know, training as a wrestler as well as then you know going off and studying for an exam and doing all that as well at the same time it's like having to be so disciplined and resilient and i suppose having that work ethic all the time sustaining that and being so focused um i suppose like what did you what helped you in you know being consistent and you must have had days where you thought oh this is just too much and you know, it's, um, I feel, how did you deal with the pressure, I suppose? And was that pressure probably coming from yourself or? You know, when you're young uh, and playing sport, I, I mean, of course I had pressure before a match, I'd be nervous. But once you got onto the mat, then the nervousness would go away and you would just do it. But, you know, thinking you mentioned that I was doing engineering and law while I was um, wrestling. And I could tell you sometimes, I remember once I was at the Pan Am Games, it was right in the middle of school. And I brought a whole bunch of books uh, from, I think then I was in actually engineering. And, and I used to joke, I put them under my bed. I don't think I ever took them out. And I used to joke that they were sort of going through the mattress while mm. I was sleeping and going in. Oh, God. But I just focused. I just super focused. When it came time yeah. to work, I just did what I had to do. It's one of the things I think in life, you know, one should do what you have to do when you ought to do it, uh, whether you want to or not. And um, yeah. that's how one succeeds in life. So uh, although I must say two semesters, I did with withdraw from school for two semesters, not the full year. And that was in 76 when I competed in the Montreal Games. We went and we uh, trained in Europe for six weeks. 
And also, I took off a semester in 1980. I was on the Canadian Olympic team then, but Canada, unfortunately, uh, boycotted the Moscow Games. Ah, uh, okay, fine. Fair enough. No, that's really, it's really interesting, actually. It's just, I think, um, you know, to know that, you know, you were doing that, um, competing in the Olympics, and then also studying for a degree at the same time. It's, it's a lot, and it's admirable, and I think it's amazing yeah. what you've achieved. Um, but Vini, just maybe if I add, you know, it's not something that you're really conscious. You, you know, you just do it. Yeah. It's almost you're like just you don't doing it. any other way. You're just yeah. trained. You have the discipline, and when you have to do something, you just get up and you do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there were times when it got difficult. You know, if you got injured, then, you know, you're out for a few weeks. It did not happen often, but it happened – from time to time over like a 15 year sports career. And you just, um, like, I didn't know any other way than to, than to just yeah. be yeah. mentally tough and do what I had to do. Exactly. You just knew Training. what you had to, I suppose you knew what you had to do and you just got on and did it. And that was, and you were just focused on the, on the, on the goal, on the target, what you yeah. wanted to achieve. And sometimes um, I wasn't even that focused. I mean, of course I wanted to win, but I just took one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually quite important as well. Like taking, breaking it down, taking one thing at a time and not thinking about everything at once to make, because that's obviously you're just going to feel so overwhelmed, aren't you? Like you've got all these things going on in your life, got to do this, got to do that. And actually just focusing on what you've got to do at the time, getting that done, moving on to the next thing. That's probably quite, quite helpful as well in, um, in how you approach it. Um, one of, uh, moving on to your experience at the IOC, now you, mu you must have so many stories to tell. Um, you must have come across so many different characters and experiences um and i think one of the things that we forget actually because we're so busy all the time is just actually enjoying what we do and having a laugh having a good time um and so i wanted to ask you you know what's one of your most memorable or comical experiences or stories um at the ioc that you can share with us you know there's so many stories and depending on the topic we're speaking about a story pops in so you're yeah. at, you know you're asking without giving a, a specific linkage I, I mean i wrote a, a couple ideas one i'll say um maybe it wasn't funny it was funny in a in a in a, <laughs> a sad way um we were sending a letter to an excuse me if anyone from federal express or dhl or, or the one who was the sponsor at the time we had a sponsor in the courier category i think it was federal express at the time and I gave a letter to be delivered, you know, to the reception or my, yeah. my uh, secretary, administrative assistant, and it was to Federal Express. Now, of course, we, the IOC, were working with Federal Express because they were our sponsor. Yeah. But Federal Express did not deliver to all countries. It was either Federal Express or DHL. They didn't necessarily deliver it to all countries. And I, the letter was brought down late. So the reception ended up giving the letter to be delivered they gave it to DHL. So Federal Express got this letter from me delivered by DHL. Federal yeah. Express was the sponsor. They were furious. Uh, and I got this call. And like, I sort of took, ooh. you know, I, I took the hit. But like, yeah. I, you know, like, what do you want me to do? Go down and lick the envelope as well? You know what I'm Exactly, and, exactly. And, and the reception didn't have the, you know, they didn't notice that it was being sent to Federal Express. You don't send it with... Or I'll just tell maybe one other story. I don't want to take. A yeah, do share. I'm telling stories. This was uh, this was in '92. I remember at the Alberville Games. It was the night before the opening ceremonies, and yeah, yeah. we were negotiating with Coke. It was going into the wee hours of the um, of the morning. Well, yeah. not yet. Before it went into the wee hours, it was about eight o'clock at night. And I said, or six o'clock, I said, I am going to the opening ceremonies. I said, yeah. let's all go to the opening ceremonies. Yeah. And then we'll come back and we'll work the night and we'll finish the negotiations. Yeah, that's good. So, well, no one else wanted to go to the opening ceremonies. Uh, and I foolishly or courageously decided yeah. I am going to the opening ceremonies. I mean, I wasn't, yeah. you know, we, we were a whole team. I'd already worked at the IOC for eight years. So, you know, it wasn't as if I had just got there and I was afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fair enough. hours later, I come back. Of course, they're in the same room, still negotiating. Unbelievable. And we negotiated well into the morning. And, um, oh, God. And the funny thing is, even in the morning, because the press conference was supposed to be the next day, yeah. um, we still, the agreement still wasn't totally finalized. So the fellow in charge, you know, the IOC member in charge, he 
he says, okay. He says, well, we're going to announce this, you know, we're going to go through with the signing ceremony and you guys will finish the contract this afternoon. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. You know, so it just, he must have been exhausted. Like, though. Well, you know, I was much younger than I, I didn't get to her. But, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. there was one funny part during the negotiations because it was getting a little tiresome and people are getting yeah. impatient. And at one point we ordered drinks. So the people from the hotel come in and they have a tray yeah. And on the tray, there's Pepsi Cola. Now, you know, if you've ever negotiated with Coke, like they don't even say the word Pepsi. It's the P word, you know, and Ooh. I'll give a plug for Coke. They're still, the, for, still our Olympic sponsor, I think since yeah. 1928. So I'm wow. getting a prescription has set in. So no one can, he uh, <laughs> stopped the, the waiter. He said, stop, stop. Because he saw the Pepsis being brought into the room. No. With Coke. And then he sort of paused. And he had this funny look on his face and he said, no, it's okay. Go in. Oh my God. So he it, was really was potentially kind of, uh, going to stop mean, them coming in with the Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah. Bottle. That's just I mean, brilliant. When you look back, you have to laugh. Anyway, enough with stories yeah. for now. I don't want to. Absolutely. No, we love the stories. That is a good story. Um, and I would have liked to have been in that room when he came in with the Pepsi Codas to see the reaction on their faces, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, and I love that you went to the Olympic, I love that you went to the opening ceremony as well. And you're just like, do you know what? Actually, we're just going to go. This is going to carry on till how many hours? We know we've got to get it done, but I don't want to miss the opening I, ceremony. And I bet it was worth it as well. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, I did it and I was happy I did it. And I have to say, working for the IOC, I had an accreditation that got me into all sports. So I love watching sports, especially at a high level. Yeah. Uh, not all sports, uh, really. But, uh, but. And um, so I really try and use my accreditation as much as possible. And then yeah, I'll sometimes go back into the office and work till like 2, 3 in the morning, <laughs> you know, because oh. I have to do the work. The work yeah. is really the priority. Uh, but sometimes I have to say, for example, I once missed just about the whole gold medal ice hockey match uh, between Canada and USA because uh, the year is irrelevant because we had a doping case. And similarly uh, in London, I remember I want to watch the final between the U S dream team and it was Barcelona and I missed it because uh, we had a, a doping case, but you know, that's, that's life. Yeah, definitely. No, it's amazing that you had, you were able to, you know, go to, go to the, the opening ceremony and you insisted on still going, but also the fact that you got to, watch all the other, go to all the other events and games and have that well, opportunity. Brilliant. Some yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, right. The other thing that I wanted to ask you actually, because I think we all have to deal with this in any organization that we work for, um, not just in the legal profession is, um, internal politics. Um, and obviously the IOC is, um, a highly political organization. So that's something that you I'm sure you had to deal with and how, how did you, how did you manage internal politics whilst you were there? Well, you know, I, I think when I first got there, I should say I started in December, 1984 and worked as IOC legal director until uh, the end of 2017. And then I stayed on for two more years as a, um, a special legal advisor. But um, in so far as the politics were concerned, I mean, at first I was just some naive you know, some naive young lawyer. And the it wasn't that political back in 1984. It became yeah. more and more political. But even when it became more and more political, in fact, someone asked me a few years ago, how have I managed not to get fired in such a political environment? I was just kind of myself, meaning I, yeah. I myself was not political. I did not have a hidden agenda. My agenda was to protect my client, the IOC. I was a straight shooter. I was trustworthy and I think yeah. people, you know, I didn't make, make enemies. Um, yeah. and, um, I, I'm, uh, you know, towards the end, I must say the politics did get a bit tiring only because the politics yeah. added hours to, to, to my working hours. And we were very, um, you know, overburdened with work and sometimes the politics kind of wasted, you know, some of my time or so I felt being the lawyer, I'm sure, you know, other people thought the politics were, were, were very important, but sometimes I felt it became too, you know, too political. Um, yeah. but that's kind of the, the world today. And it's funny, I don't know if you're going to ask me this, but I, I think it's interesting to say that, um, you know, I started at the IOC in 1984. I was fresh out of, uh, not law school. I did my articling. 
you know, mm. so you get stash, you're, you're an articling student. And yeah. um, I was hired at a prestigious law firm. There were six of us articling students and none of us were hired back. And then someone at the law firm told me there's an opening at the IOC. Um, and uh, at that moment, there was no other job that I wanted except that job. My mother was saying, are you applying for other jobs? I said, no, that's the job I want. And I was hired at the IOC largely because I had no experience whatsoever. The director at that time was a, a different administration, much different than it is now. Okay. But the director at that time wanted two in-house lawyers, um, and none of whom were that experienced because she didn't want anyone to threaten her. So, mm -hmm. um, so I ended up being one of those two lawyers. I basically, I got hired because I was inexperienced. Uh, less than a year later, that director left. She was forced out by the president, President Samaranch. The other lawyer left and I was mm -hmm. alone. I became director of Le legal affairs in mm -hmm. June 85, way prematurely, way mm -hmm. prematurely. Mm -hmm. But um, I definitely grew with the position, grew with the IOC. And mm -hmm. when I left, um, and it was an incredible ride. And when I left uh, my position as director of legal affairs, the department had grown from one to, I think it was 17 or 18 people. Wow. Did you not feel overwhelmed by that? I mean, you'd taken on a job where you'd had no experience because you'd had no experience. And then because of whatever the circumstances were, the director left and then you were all of a sudden the, the person in charge. Like, you know, how was that? It's, it's scary? funny. And, and maybe, you know, maybe I've been too open now, but I wasn't overwhelmed. I, I didn't get to the open part. I was young and strong. Yeah. And what should I be overwhelmed about? I mean, I worked mm. long hours. And uh, I did what I could. I felt good about myself. And, and that was it. Sometimes as I got older in life, and sometimes when there was too much or when your body, you know, if you're, if you're and I know this is one of the things that you address at your uh, uh, next generation boot camp, you know, if you're working too much and you're approaching or in burnout or at the initial yeah. stages, then, then these things do affect you. You're less resilient. You're overwhelmed uh, more easily. But uh, at that age, I was young and strong, and no, I wasn't overwhelmed. It was like a yeah. wow, what an exciting adventure! Yeah, that's the thing. You, t I suppose, that's you. Your mindset was you, you approached it in that this is, you know, this is exciting, um, yeah. and actually, I'm going to, you know, grab it with two hands and just do the best I can and and take the opportunity. Um, that's, um, I think, that's um, commendable that you had that mindset because I think a lot of people may not have felt like that, may have felt, oh, you know. Um, well, that's kind of who I was. And yeah. I, again, I'm not bragging. It's just, I, I didn't think I was, you know, anything special. I just did what I had to do. Again, the wrestling, the discipline helped. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, I think if you feel good about yourself, that makes all the difference. Yeah, yeah, um, it's the confidence. So yeah. Even before we get talking about law and being a lawyer, you yeah. Know, if you feel good about yourself as a person, mm. then, and if you're true to yourself, mm. uh, and th th then I think you can do a much better job as a lawyer, uh, mm. uh, you know, as, as a friend, as, mm. as a, uh, I don't want to say as a husband, I think I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> but, you know, in kind of whatever you do in life, yeah. you just have a, you know, in your everyday interactions, you just yeah. have, a, have a good attitude absolutely it's how you feel that's so true it's it's in the mind isn't it it's like your mindset how you feel yeah. about yourself as you're saying and then that all affects your confidence and what you think you're capable of doing and yeah. and that then all drills down into how you behave and what you put into what your job is and everything so i think that's and, a really big, and i big think point. if you have an unselfish attitude yeah uh things go better yeah People yeah feel it. they like you better you feel good about yourself and yeah. uh things happen in a better way for you Absolutely. and those with whom you're connected. Definitely. Well, hold that thought. <laughs> if you've got the right attitude, maybe you'll do well on the next piece of this oh, okay. Live Laugh Law. Now we're getting it's to time the for the game. Yes, it's time for the game. Sweaty part. Okay. Yes. So it's time for think fast. Basically, what you have to do is I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You have to answer very quickly, immediately. You can't think about the answer for too long. Um, you have to think fast. And um, 
the most amount of questions basically we're going to have a leaderboard so whoever can answer the most questions in the allotted times so we'll see how you do but um is this something is this have you played anything like this before um not really I, I, <laughs> okay I, I think i'd rather <laughs> lose and, and not look stupid but anyway go ahead I, i'm teasing I, I'm, I'm okay yeah. well how would you you need you need you need to have your game face on you need to have your wrestling face on you need okay. to get in the space you know, okay. need to you need you need to just center focus. Yeah, let's 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 and do we're it. And we're gonna we're gonna go. Okay, three, two, one. Why is the sun yellow? Because it's hot. What did you eat for breakfast today? Eggs. Why do we sleep? To uh, regenerate our energy. What's the best thing about wrestling? Um, the challenge. What was Michael Jackson's first word? Uh, oh gee, oh my God! I can't believe uh, uh, some uh, one of his songs. Like oh, next, next. What can I buy for a dollar? Not much. What are lawyers? Uh, lawyers are are deep down they're really good guys. The problem is their uh, is sometimes their 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 clients. Name the best place. The best place. Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, Maldive Islands scuba diving. Uh, oh, how do you dance? Um, decent. I have rhythm. I may not do the right steps, but yeah. Decent and rhythm. I'll take it. Who ate all the cookies? Um, I ate some of them. Where did you hide all the money? Uh, under my mattress. What's a cool greeting? Uh, hi. <laughs> Why is Donald Trump president? Why? Oh God. Um, cause the world is a bizarre place these days. If you could have anybody over for dinner, who would it be? Oh my you can goodness. choose me if you want, or Parole. Uh, first of all, while I'm saying that, I'll say a word from uh, Michael Jackson said, beat it, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the song. Anyone over for dinner, I'd have someone really intelligent. Who's really intelligent these days? Son of okay, I, I'll take that as me. Um, what will be your Halloween costume this year? Oh my. Um, I don't know, dress up as a fat guy. Who is your favorite sibling? Ooh, controversial. Oh, no, I can't answer that one. They're all special. I, I can't, I, I can't. Why did you get kicked off the airplane? Um, cause I got on the wrong one. Well, who's hiding under your bed? That's true. I don't know, the boogeyman. What are you afraid of? Uh, hmm. Time! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find that, Howard? The it was okay. Man. It was it was okay. I mean, some of this I just wanted to get an answer out. Some of the answers were silly, but they like the boogeyman under the bed. I was going to say I'm afraid of me. I don't want to say I'm afraid of nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid of uh, afraid of you know. I'm afraid of not succeeding. Sometimes I'll say it now. It's after That's the deep. question. But no. Yeah. You got you got sixteen, Howard. You got six. Uh, no, average. You did average, yeah. I think. You yeah. got sixteen. I mean, I'm um, to give a meaningful answer too, although some of them were. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like why is the sun yellow? Because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you'd have me over for dinner because somebody that's really intelligent. You know, me that us. I'm really. Yeah, impressive. sorry. I should have said Thanks, you. Howard. I should have said you and Peru right away. I blew that one. Oh. But I mean, I was taking your question seriously. I mean, I don't wow. want to take time, but if you can answer it in five seconds, who would you want for dinner? And you can't answer me. Um, Whitney Houston. Okay. <laughs> okay. I should have said Michelle Obama, actually. Yeah. I wouldn't mind her over for dinner. That would be a fun time. Just Michelle, not Barack, I mean, just so Michelle. so many people I'd love to have dinner with if I had the choice, so. I know. What well, can you think of anyone else? Who else would you think? Um, I would want to get some like world philosopher, like just some super intelligent person I would like to have over. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I'm watching, uh, I'm watching now the last dance and yeah. you know, I, I find uh, um, uh, Michael Jordan interesting because I, I, I'm not saying he's the greatest guy that ever walked the earth at all, mm -hmm. but I, I'm very impressed by his will to win. Yeah, yeah, the kind of just the sh 
dedication yeah. and the I mean, he does not do things in a mediocre way uh, everything like he does who mm. do not do things half ass or in a mediocre way yeah yeah absolutely i need to finish the last dance actually i haven't finished it yet I don't, how many there's quite a few episodes i think i'm like halfway yeah. through i'm a nine of ten anyway yeah no it's a good one i need to finish that it is good um okay well that was good i think you did well i think um you know 16 average we'll put that on the on the leadership board lead, lead, um leaderboard and um well we'll just see how how you can compare to okay. the That's others okay. okay right i wanted to ask you a couple more questions mm -hmm. um so you finished your time at the ioc um you now you know have the freedom to do i suppose what what you want whatever whatever you want to do what what's the next what's next for you and what are you most looking forward to you know, I'm actually struggling with that at the moment because at the end, uh, I was still employed by the IOC, but I wasn't doing much work, uh, but I wasn't able to work for other people. Now, since mm -hmm. the end of the day, I'm no longer employed with the IOC, so things are coming across my table. I have found some interesting possibilities. People have approached me, and all yeah. of a sudden, I find that like I'm working a bit more than I think I should. I mean, I also want to take advantage of my retirement. I mean, I would just love yeah. to get up and, and not always have something that I feel I have to do. I mean, in some ways I love the pressure, but I don't want it, you know, yeah. so long uh, in my day as it used to be when I was working at the IOC. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, sort of get on the boat and then get off the boat at certain stops rather than miss the boat. Meaning I'm going to pick some files that I find of interest some projects. I will do them. I will drop yeah. the others. I want to be able to get up early in the morning. Uh, I'm studying some Indian philosophy now called Vedanta. Wow. So, so I like to do that early. Then um, I want to do exercise. I want to have time to you know, read the yeah. newspaper um, yeah. and time for, you know, I, I kind of want to do just what I want to do. And, and that may sound silly. No, I know yeah, what you mean. It's like I yeah. never have a chance to do what I want to do. It's always like a list. Oh, sh I got to do that. I got to do that. Exactly. I didn't yeah. Like, you know, every now and then, maybe to take a nap in the afternoon. I'm oh, really I love. I'm impartial to a nap. Yeah. I love an afternoon nap. Definitely. All these things are important, you know, and that's what you want to do now. You want to pick and choose what you want, how you want to spend your time, yeah. um, and make the most of it. I suppose. Yeah, it's still um, a work in progress, but I'm feeling that I'm making progress. Yeah, no, that's good. It's good. Um, and the last question I'm going to ask you, which I think is probably one of the most important today, actually, if anyone's going to take anything away from this, it should be the answer to this question. Howard, what is your karaoke go-to song? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I well, um, one that, that I could think of, I, I, I wrote a... Um, is um, like Elvis Presley return to sender. You have to remember that there's certain songs that I'd sing in karaoke and yeah. other songs I would just sing in my car because of, you know, the, the, the tone of the, of the word in a high rocket, or maybe if it's kind of a, a love song, <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't want to, you know, sing it in karaoke, depending how I feel. But yeah. um yeah. You know, there's certain, I mean, yesterday I was listening to music to relax and the first song I put on was Carole King, Tapestry. Oh, I love really Carole King. But it's, it's really a beautiful song. Just to name a few that I like, you know, I like I, Elton John, The Bridge, I'd sing that. Robbie Williams, Feel. Um, nice. you got some hits there. Got a good Chris, list. Chris the Bird Lady in Red, but that one I'm not sure I'd sing in karaoke because that's uh, too mushy. But, um, but a maybe, few high uh, notes in that might be hard to reach. This yeah, one though, too. Elvis Presley, I'm, Return to Sender. Yeah, that's a good one. He's a very, and the last song I want to remember, I want to remember, I, uh, this one I like to sing. Uh, I might sing it in, in karaoke. It's called, Where Do You Go To My Lovely? It's like a one hit Ooh. wonder. Where do you Where go do to you... Your viewers can look it up if they want. It's by Peter Sarsted. It's a one hit wonder, but uh, I like it because of the sound of the words, but don't play it now. <laughs> oh, I'm playing it now. Oh, okay, go ahead. I can hear it now, just for our viewers. I'm hoping everyone can hear it. I can, yeah. You're not going to give us any, you're not going to sing a bar, are you? No, can I, hear I, it I won't make anyways. you. Can't hear it now anyways. Oh, uh, no. 
that's all good. I have many, um, I mean, with me, I mean, with karaoke in general, do you have to have a few drinks in you to sing karaoke or do you have to be in a certain mood or does it have to be a crowd or do you prefer that it's just you in a karaoke box that you've hired out with a few friends? Like, what's well, I mean, if you say karaoke, that means in front of a crowd. So I'd like there to be a crowd. I don't yeah. need to have drinks in me, but I'm sure I'll be at least as good with a few drinks in me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't need any drinks, to be honest. And I do need an audience and I need a stage. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could, yeah, I love karaoke. I've got one of those uh, karaoke machines that sometimes I just bust out on my own at home. Anyway, um, moving on. So um, next piece that we're going we're gonna to kind of end on, um, it's time for the confession. I have never told anyone this, but no well, one is listening, Howard. Um, yeah, right. Except me. Not now, but uh, maybe you. tomorrow. Well, so, this is the thing. It's it's just me. It's just you. Me. Number one, I am so open. Um, yeah, you are. That there's kind of not much that I don't say. Uh, and some of the mm. things I don't say is because I am not going to say them. <laughs> so, oh. But if you want one confession, I'll say, um, I find as I get older, I get teary-eyed at, at um, sad movies. How's that? Oh, that's a nice confession. It reveals a vulnerable, sensitive side of you. I, you know, I, yes, I can be at the same time vulnerable and tough, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's good though. That's good. Have you any films that you've watched recently where you, where, where you cried um, or the last film that you, you know, remember that you watched? None of them, none of them really, um, no film jumps to mind. No. I, I don't want to start getting like, not political. I, I, I'll, Fair, I'll enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, in this lockdown, have you been watching more Netflix films? No, generally? I'm not a, a Netflix binger. Uh, when I watch, I usually it's max one a, one a, one a day, uh, yeah. for obvious reasons. Um, I mean, I mentioned before The Last Dance, I wasn't going to mention any that I'm watching now, but that one, I, it appeals to me because it, it gives me, um, it reminds me of the days that I was kind of a, an athlete yeah. and really, yeah. uh, you know, resilient and, and, and strong. Um, a few that I've, I've watched, I mean, I like Breaking Bad. It's an old oh, one. Oh, yeah. That's Dexter a good one. was interesting where the hero is actually a murderer, but everyone likes him. And I'll mention one other, which I found interesting, The Wire. And I'm interested because there's Ooh. something intelligent about it. It's another old one, but it's basically a, a police-based uh, series. And it runs for about six years. And you, I realized when I saw the last episode in year six, I realized that we were right back at the first episode of year one, meaning the world unfortunately doesn't always change you know that's the same crazy it's happening over and over again yeah you know, just maybe with uh well obviously with different people and maybe uh some of the uh, objects are are more um up to date technologically savvy but it's the same kind of rubbish garbage you yeah. know yeah yeah, yeah and good values that are uh, that the world is facing so yeah, that's the thing. You get to a point with a certain show that you're watching where it's just the same theme, but different characters, different setting, but yeah. that's the same but, common theme. Yeah. No, but in this case, it was, it, was, it was that the last episode kind of made full circle. And you say, you know, I yeah. said, hey, honey, we're kind of back where we started. And I was saying that, and I, I said that in a complimentary way, not that, oh, it's boring. It's doing, it's just, I think the fellow who did the series was making a point that uh, yeah. <laughs> people have the good and the bad and in similar proportions, unfortunately, or uh, in any event, well, I don't know. Those things never change. Bad, but the bad stuff still happens, and, uh, and the good, and there's good people trying to fight, and yeah. a bunch of people in between. I mean, it's yeah, well, it's, it's who you are, and I think the better you are as a person, the better you feel inside yourself. Uh, the less, or let me say, the more unselfish you are. I think. Mm. Uh, Qualities like that tend to bring you further in this world. But it's good because I, I, I understand that the, uh, you teach the lawyers things that they should know, but that no one taught them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I remember this. I, no one in my family was a lawyer. So when I started, I mean, I, I definitely could have used some, uh, some, some assistance. Like when I was at a, um, 
when I was doing the stash, yeah, they I should have gone and knocked on the doors of the senior partners instead of doing the grunt work for all the uh, junior, junior, junior partners. You know, I should little things like that are it's silly. What I'm saying, but or there's no, no, other it's things. You know, you don't. You know, sometimes people work hours and hours in their office, mm. and it's not because you work hours and hours in your office, even if you do decent work, that you'll necessarily be seen as, as a top level lawyer. You know, mm. sometimes you, uh, you may work less hours, but less hours, but you're sharp and get the job done. Mm. Not to say that you should not be prepared to work long hours. You have to pay your dues as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's really helpful. Well, thank you so much. That's it. Thank you so much for your time today. Mm. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. And I hope our viewers will find it helpful and fun and entertaining um and we hope you've had a good time i've had a good time Bavini. i mean there's so many other things i mean i could talk for for hours I but i hope that we covered some uh points that will be of interest and uh definitely to your viewers no definitely thank you my pleasure <laughs>